Hi guys, Glader here. So today's going to be a video update on the World of Warcraft bot I've been talking about the past few videos. This is a bot that's built on top of W Robots Corpse that I've uh, decompiled, extracted, sort of started refactoring as well. I'm going to get into a little bit of that shortly. So what I've been doing for the past few days, other than celebrating the holidays, was I've been extracting pieces of the W Robot API, building my own API for that, and preparing to essentially move away from W Robot as soon as possible. That transition will be a long-term goal, but for the meantime, there's a critical importance in doing so, and I'm going to get into that right now. So, firstly, a lot of the stuff W Robot does under the hood. Let me see if I. Can... It's been a while since I opened this. I've been working on something else. Um. I think it's under here, yeah. So it's been a while since W Robot. It's been a. Yeah. Sorry. So let's get right into this part right here. So the main, the main concept behind the API change is firstly, I want to be able to run multiple bots on the same bot application. And there's a lot of static stuff, and that's so it's not possible right now. Additionally, there's a lot of waste, CPU time waste, in W Robot. For example, every time you access the buffs on a target or a unit, it's loaded directly from memory. Uh, a list is allocated for the auras and stuff like that. Every time you want to do that, that's expensive. Uh, I, I assume it's not free to inspect the memory, essentially marshal or deserialize it into an actual structure like uh, Aura, and then create a list for it. So the idea here is we'd create something you might see in web applications where you could query for Auras and then we'll actually cache the results. And that's done through this interface right here, which has some extensions which are a lot easier to use. We go into here, and so we're going to do cache. We're going to cache those results every frame the actual combat code is running, that way there's a lot less waste. Additionally, uh, we're going to go through a spell casting service instead of directly trying to cast the spells, and what this is going to allow us to do is to queue up spells that are on and off the global, and since you can only really cast one spell on the global, if there's even, if, if you're even off the global cooldown to begin with, uh, we're not going to, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, we're going to handle that at the end of the frame. We're going to check the queued up stuff, maybe even warn the user if they're queuing up too many spells and they can't be cast, essentially fizzled, because, you know, global cooldown. And also, uh, spells or some spells are off the global cooldown, and right now there's not really a good API in W Robot to deal with that. And so that's why this exists. And we're going to have se several more of these services that are currently still built on top of the W Robot API, but long-term goal is to completely move off of that, write our own thing, and use as little as W Robot as possible. But since I'm not a reverse engineer, there's there's definitely going to be some still there. But I'm gonna, we're going to be looking into that. So another thing that you want, probably want to see is the, the settings. So the setting stuff works. You can create mutable settings classes that you can change at runtime. I'm going to show you what that looks like, the UI, shortly. And as well as I'm going to, I have a simple combat profile that does practically nothing, but does some stuff with the new UI, so, or the new API. So you can see it using the spellcasting service, using the unit buff repository. And we also have it casting Frost Strike when it's in combat and refreshing these buffs, so nothing special. But I have just finished a library that's going to really, it's going to be critical to building complex combat profiles, and I'm going to get into that too. This will be a long video. Um, hopefully you're still with me. We're going to start running the mod right now though, because I don't want this to be too long. And I want to show you the new settings AP, or UI. So let's run, the, oh no, i got to run it as administrator. Uh, yeah, I didn't launch VS as administrator, so we're going to have to open this. Okay, 
Okay, release mode. So we'll launch it from here. Okay, we're logged in with Test DK, who is in Ice Crown Citadel. We'll give him some runic power. So he can actually do something, make him go a little bit faster. Modify speed 10. Maybe make him fly. There we go. Okay, so. There's some creatures. They're aggressive. We'll go ahead and launch the bomb. You can see we're, we're still on uh, test DK. And we're going to load an assembly now. I think this is recent. So we'll go ahead and load that. And then when we try to run it, first time you try to run it, it's going to force you to configure it. So I'd like to here's the, here's the settings menu. Um, it's not you can actually can you can actually create different categories and stuff and add some tool tips down here for that stuff. But but that's uh, I haven't done that yet. And I'd like to add saving and, and loading of previous settings. So so let's go ahead and say that we want to do on Holy Aura and we'll keep the combat behaviors going on out of combat. And so once you're done with that, uh, I'm going to put an OK button, but right now you have to hit X. Then we actually start, and, and notice that the Horn of Winter was not buffed up, which is good. Now we're actually in combat, and so it'll start to try to Frost Strike. And again, like before, you can disable it, and then the combat profile is stopped, and you can re-enable it. You won't have to do the settings again, because it'll remember the last settings. So yeah, it's uh, just Frost Striking, because that's all we had... Uh, she got on so we don't die. Okay, so now I want to show you that you can actually configure the settings at runtime. So you see, what it does is it's going to make sure we're always in the presence. So this is our combat presence. Uh, for example, on Holy Aura is a pretty, copy, pretty popular combat presence to be in. But say you wanted to be Frost for this one, you can actually change the settings. And since we're only running that uh, out of combat, as soon as combat ends, it should go into frost. Or maybe not, that's weird. Blood? Unholy? Oh, I guess I've got some sort of typo because frost isn't working. That's. <laughs> I don't really want to record this video because I want to get back to working. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at why that is. We'll probably find out pretty quick. Frost Presence. Frost Presence. Blood Presence. Unholy Presence. That's very weird. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why it doesn't want to go into Frost Presence. But you can see what I mean by... Uh, you can configure this stuff out of combat. And so you can do a lot more configuration than just what you see here. For example, I'm going to have a, a lot of stuff coming up. We're, you're going to want to be able to configure it quite a bit. So let's hop into what I've been working on the past two days that actually centers on how we're going to create these complex uh, behaviors. And we're not going to use the state machines that W Robot provides. We're not going to use that engine thing. I'm not even sure what that is. I don't look into it. Uh, we're not going to just have a bunch of ifs and else's. You know, that's horrible. We're going to have uh, industry quality game AI behavior trees. And so I wrote a library for that. I guess I'll just go through that if you guys are interested. Okay, so behavior trees, you definitely want to go watch a video on them if you're not familiar with them. Uh, essentially, it takes a tree structure. It takes two main nodes, selectors and sequences, which act as the logical ors and ands as nodes, and evaluates the behavior tree every frame to figure out what we should be doing. Uh, and you can have be nodes that are running for multiple ticks. And so it's really interesting. And I've implemented a handful of nodes. Uh, there's some other libraries out there that I almost ended up using but didn't fit my needs. This one supports generic actors, generic contexts. And so, and also it, it also, it doesn't have a visual editor like another one did, but I'm gonna try to get around to doing that. So you just have to like compose it manually. Let me go into one of the unit tests and show you. It's pretty ugly, and you would do it a little bit cleaner than this. But so you have to like 
compose it in code currently, like this. And so yeah, so I've been working on behavior tree. I really can't go through a whole thing of what behavior trees are, but I'll have a link in the description of this library, which has a readme, and so you can read about it on there. But this is going to allow us to create uh, very complex action or like behaviors for for the bot as to like sort of make decisions, complicated decisions on what we should be doing at any given point in time. And it's going to be really interesting to see that, and I'll be working on that as soon as this video ends. I'm going to start working on a Deathlight one for PvP, and it's going to be pretty configurable. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, target selection and movement. And that you can turn that on and off with a settings button. That's the plan. And so I think that's going to be very useful for the multiboxing. You have all these different branches that deal with like uh, cooldown management, defensive cooldown management, uh, interrupts both in melee range and out of range, uh, target switching on immunity, stuff like that. You know, give, to give you really just the edge. And there'll be all sorts of different damage modes, and each node's going to be like the normal rotation, but then there's conditions to enter and execute branch. And it's, it's going to be, I think it'll be really cool stuff. I'm going to make a video on that once that's available. Uh, it's going to be difficult to describe without the visual editor, because it's just going to be a, a bunch of weird looking code, but definitely look in behavior trees if you're interested. I, I think they're going to they're going to play a huge role in the, in the quality of this rotation bot. And so, yeah, so just to reiterate, new API for interacting with the World of Warcraft client memory that has an emphasis on caching and queuing. And uh, the, settings, the settings thing that I mentioned in the last videos, now you actually saw that and it works and stuff. I think it works similar to WROBOT. And also behavior trees. So yeah, I wrote a behavior tree library real quick. I thought it would take way longer, but it's actually uh, pretty simple to do. Surprisingly, uh, for the longest time, I have a lot of game projects, and I thought about writing behavior tree library. Just never got around to it. I thought it would take a lot more effort, but really, it's something you can actually do in a day. But yeah, so that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope to get this bot out at some point, whether free or not. I don't know. I'll have more videos once I've got some more content to show you guys. Thanks for watching.